Faith is something we use every day. When you cross a bridge, you are putting your faith in that bridge. You know, an architect designed it, a crew built it, and people have been using it for a long time. But I want you to consider a bridge, and no one's ever used it. Your only reason to cross it is to get to the other side. Let's say you also know that there's a 50-50 chance an architect designed it instead of someone off the street, a 50-50 chance it had a competent crew rather than semi-sentient raccoons, and a 50-50 chance a terrorist didn't plant a bomb. There are eight possible outcomes, and only one of them will get you safely across that bridge. To the world, putting your faith in that bridge is more reasonable than putting your faith in God. But we have God's inspired, verifiable word, and we're going to look at how we achieve faith, why we need it, what is faith, and what it looks like. Starting with how, please turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. Verses 14 through 17. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without sound preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Hearing is a very prominent theme in this passage. God does not expect us to believe without reason. And he says through Paul, how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? But we can hear. We have God's inspired word and are blessed to have those kinds of people who are described here as having beautiful feet. But we must not be like those in verse 16. We've been told the word and now we must act on our faith. But when we turn and consider why we need faith, it is essentially to act on that faith. First Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, is where we see the elect exiles being challenged and persecuted. Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for its salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold though it, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We will face persecution, whether it's being looked down on, purposely unrecognized, mocked, or as being or as is looking more and more likely, our lives and the, our lives and the, life of the lives of those we care about threatened. And if we'll ever need faith, it will, will be when those days come. But as we think of that sad, horrible truth, we're also reminded in this passage of the reward that is waiting for us. And then we turn to consider what is faith. And the answer is found in Hebrews 11. And verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We've looked at how and why we need faith, and we've gotten our answers from God's holy word, and that's the question of where we get faith from. And that word is what allows us to believe in God and Jesus. We haven't seen them, but we have seen their footprints. And when we consider what faith looks like, it looks like standing up for what is right. It looks like telling the man threatening your life that, yes, Jesus is the Son of God. And it also looks like Hebrews 11, verses 32 through 38. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might uh, rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, 
wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Faith looks like trusting God enough to endure everything and anything the world throws at us, all the while believing that he is worthy of that faith and that he rewards those who seek him. Consider that bridge again. How unreasonable it is to put your faith in that bridge. But consider a bridge, and the architect's an old family friend, and he's told you how diligent the crew is, double-checking everything they do, and you must have drove past it a hundred times during its construction, and it, when it was finished, you saw one of those massive overload trucks where they've got cars going ahead of it with the giant poles to lift up the telephone wires, and they've got streets that cut off, also that this thing can crawl at about eight miles an hour to uh, go uh, through a town. And uh, how much more reasonable to put your faith in that bridge. And that is the faith and the conviction we can have in God's word. Uh, as a final word of encouragement, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Uh,